Hey guys, Mike here. Uh, today, part two of our cooling system repair on my Dodge Charger. Uh, I already replaced the thermostat. Now I have to replace my leaky radiator. So this is what I'm gonna show you in this video. Um, this is a 2007 Dodge Charger. Uh, this will work on a 2006 to 2010 models and probably similar to other cars and chargers as well. Um, I already have all the parts, so let me show you what you're gonna need. You're gonna need a brand new radiator and radiators you can get anywhere from 60 bucks to 150. This is an old aluminum one I picked up on eBay for 150. I'll put a link below so you can see what it looks like. I mean, where to get it. Um, all, I went with all aluminum so I never have to worry about the radiator again, you know? It's basically lifetime at this point, as long as well, life of this car. Um, so just so you know, when we're gonna be removing the old one, there's basically four bolts we're gonna be getting to. Uh, but I'll show you guys that as time goes on. I got brand new hoses in case I need to replace them. If not, I'll just return them. I'll put the part numbers and links below as well. I got new clamps, is, is something higher grade clamp wise. If I need to replace them, I'll pick this up on AutoZone right here. Uh, this I got on uh, eBay as AutoZone, you're paying 150 for a plastic radiator. Well, at least the plastic side. So I also picked up this um, nose fill coolant. Uh, filing uh, filling funnel kit and tester you're gonna need this to top of your system and also do uh, a burp uh, of the cooling system to make sure there's no air in there I'm gonna do a follow-up video on that so check the link below how to burp your cooling system that's very important after you either replace your uh, coolant drain your radiator or put a new one in you know all the same idea you have to burp your system make sure there's no air in the hoses and so on so link below to that video I don't want to make this video too long for you guys picked this up on Amazon it was 20 bucks because I think AutoZone is like 50 um, I'll put a link below but there's a lot of them um, you're gonna need obviously antifreeze I recommend getting the concentrate because for uh, 20 bucks you get in a gallon and then you get a gallon of distilled water which gives you two gallons uh, as opposed to getting the 50 50 mix which is already pre-mixed for you half and half and then you're paying 15 dollars just you know for that uh, i believe for the charger for this model we need about 11 quarts so we need two bottles of this two bottles of uh, distilled water and obviously some tools socket wrenches so on screwdrivers but uh to get started uh, and I'm gonna be showing you guys uh, this, how a do-it-yourself guy does it at home like myself, not a professional mechanic, meaning we're not lifting the car, we're not dropping the radiator from the bottom, everything's gonna come out from the top. You can take off your front bumper, but it's not necessary. It'll be just maybe a little easier access and uh, visibility-wise. For now, I'm not removing it unless I truly need to, but let me show you guys how to get started. Pop these lids up first. I'm gonna be removing these bolts here. So, it's a tight space actually, you do need a socket wrench. And I lost my bolt already. I gotta correct that. Now it's on the bottom. All right, next one. <laughs> this doesn't work with the automatic ones. Remember to save your bolts. So this loosens up the whole radiator assembly already. We still gotta remove the screws. Now before I get in here, I gotta get rid of my air intake. So I have an aftermarket one, but usually you're gonna have a box here if you have a stock one. So you remove the box the same way, just unscrew a couple of screws and plugs, pop this connector off as well. You just slide the tab open and unplug it. So disconnect the hose here. Get that out of the way. Now we can, this is your lower radiator hose. This is the thermostat in here. If you don't know where it is, that's what I replaced. I have the link to the video below. Um, and then this is your upper one. We gotta disconnect both. We gotta drain the radiator as well. Since I had a hole in the bottom of my radiator, it's already drained. And um, 
I did uh, the way I found that out. I did a pressure test. So I do have a link below how to do a cooling system pressure test through the reservoir. You can rent the kit for free from AutoZone so you don't have to purchase anything. And that will tell you exactly where the leak is coming from. But anyway, to get back to this. So we have to remove the fan assembly now. Uh, we have to disconnect this with power here. Couple of screws. First, what I'm gonna do is get rid of this upper radiator hose. So the easiest way to do it is these compression clamps. You grab them, you squeeze, and you roll it off. Just be careful, they snap back, they can hurt you. And we have one more in here, get some light over there. This one's a little harder to get to. The same idea, that's the one that connects to the radiator. Okay. So, oh, let's show right here. See it? Yeah. That's always coming. Right. So now I can pull this off. And let's say, you know, you don't need to drain your uh, radiator. The drain plug is on the bottom. Just get a drain pan. I forgot to tell you guys you're gonna need one of these. Throw it under the car and drain it as you're starting to do all this. Uh, to drain your radiator first, um, which I don't because everything leaked out. That's the drain hose. That's the thing you gotta unscrew counterclockwise, and that will drain everything out. There we go. Oh, got a little gunk here. I'm gonna clean that up. So, you know. Before you start chucking these old hoses, make sure the ones you guys got actually fit. Which yeah, it looks like we got the right one. This was the 72284, that's the upper part. But I'll put links below, so you don't have to stress. Save your clamps, because those, those are easy to work with clamps. But if they are outdated and beat up, you know, then definitely upgrade to new ones. Now, I'm gonna get my flathead screwdriver, and I'm gonna disconnect the fan and you're just pushing this tab down and then pulling out from this side so that's disconnected now and guys one big thing i mentioned that in my previous video uh, when i did the thermostat make sure your car is cold don't be doing any of this if your car was just run and your whole cooling system's hot because everything's under pressure it's hot it will explode it will burn you and so on so make sure your car is cold now the fan so we got a couple 10 millimeter bolts we gotta get off. There's one right here. Right in here. Okay, don't lose your bolts. And there's one on the other side, right over here, right below where the hose was connected. Okay, get the steps loose. And now, the fan should just come right out. That's what really all that was holding it. So, be careful not to. Hey, don't mess up anything on the way out. But this is your pen assembly. So, you know, when you get this out, inspect it, make sure there's no cracks or nothing, uh, as you know, this might be the perfect opportunity to replace this as well. But this was all working fine, so I'm not gonna worry about that. And now for the fun part, getting the radiator out. So like I told you guys, we got four bolts. There's one in here, there's one on the bottom we gotta get to. And same on this side. Now I want to show you the four bolts you need to remove. The two on the bottom and the two on the top. We're going to start with this one over here, which is located right over here. So removing the bumper will be easier. I am going to make a video in the near future how to remove your front bumper. It's not that hard, especially if you want to replace your headlights and so on. But I got some light in there. And if you can see the rusted clip that bolt right there. So we can actually get in there easily, right through here. Hopefully you can see it right now. But basically, 
I can get my hand on there with a wrench and remove it. So that's one. The toughest one that a lot of people have trouble with is the one over here on this side, which is actually not that bad if you got the right tools, maybe angled wrenches and so on. As you can see, that's it right there. So same thing, we just got maneuver our hand in there and get that probably with one of those angled sockets which i'll show you guys in a second then to the bottom so the bottom on the driver's side like i said removing the bumper would be easy but it's not that bad it is located right there guys we'll get some light on that so there's one right there so remove that one and then to the other side same idea these bottom ones are easy to get to. Right with me. Right here on the bottom. So that's right where the drain hose is. You guys can see I got my arm right through here. And I'm running it right there. And I got access with my wrench for just a little extension. And now I'm working on it. We can try going through here as well. But I found this to work pretty good right now. So I'm going to get this piece loose little by little. And then we'll move on to the other side. Alright guys, so we got the screw from the toughest corner removed. Honestly, it wasn't that tough. A uh, little bit of elbow grease and you get it out. We're going to clean these up. They're all rusted out. Now we're going to move on to this one. And before you disconnect all of them, just make sure let's get the bottom ready to hose out as well, which I'll do right now. So for the bottom radiator hose, you got a clamp right there you got to remove. I already pulled it up. I'm not going to make you guys watch how to remove a clamp. And then down here behind those hoses, uh, right there, it connects. So that's what we got to pull out now. just slides off. I just replaced the thermostat so really easy on this one. And then the bottom. Okay. So we get the hose out. That's a lower one. Best way I found to get into this school is going right here behind the headlight from the back. And I already know where it is, so I'm just gonna go by seal to get the wrench on it. 10 millimeter four. And it was really hard to loosen. So what I actually did is I grabbed the open head wrench like this, put it through the crack right here. I was holding the wrench with my other hand. Give it a, some pressure push like this to loosen up. And that's loose for me. And now I can just work my way to get it loose completely. And so on the driver's side bottom, put a wrench in here between the bumper. Give me some space. You have you have, you have the plastic cover, obviously you gotta remove that. That's a couple screws. But basically the bolts right there. I used the push wrench trick also on this because it was stuck and now I'm just getting it off so we'll get that one off and then we'll move to the passenger side one but yeah that's where it's located so now the easiest ball to get to is the one by the drain plug and as you see the second I put pressure on it mine broke right off so i gotta replace that some people say you can manage with two or three bolts the car was made with four bolts put four bol bolts back on it but that's it all the bolts are off now and i think we are ready to pull out the radiator so before you can pull it out make sure to lift these tabs that we unscrewed at the beginning then i'm holding it down 
So at this point, we're ready to pull out the radiator. The tabs that we unscrewed at the beginning, try to pull them out or loosen them, so they're not holding on the radiator. As you see, they have uh, these tabs holding here. This one actually, when I was checking the radiator, fell out. There's a hose here connected to the side of the radiator. It's not part of it, so just disconnect that from the side. You'll see it when you do it. Now we just push it forward. And slide it out. Make sure you don't jam it on any of the other hoses. Wiring. Get around these two hoses, I'll show you guys really close. Right there, gotta get this out of the way so the bottom hose connector can get through. But once we get past that, it just comes out. Here's all the radiator. Now we can swap out the seals, the new one, and begin reinstall. All right guys, so before you start switching and installing your new radiator, just do a visual check to make sure that everything looks the same, you know, regardless if they say it's for your car or not. Check that the screw locations are correct, these tabs here, these little mountain brackets here, which everything seems to line up. I'm gonna check the other side as well. Those are the four mountain bolts that we need. So some radiators come with clips, as you see here, that you might have to move from your old radiator to the new radiator um as a lot of them don't come with it so save these clips from your old one or purchase new ones and this aluminum one actually came with pre-threaded built-in as there's no plastic here so you know check your old bolts make sure they fit which they do so i'm good with that and now basically i can just start moving the tabs here this just pops right off and i'm gonna Move this over to this one. So that will go that way. Okay. That's the best we're gonna get that on right now. Probably have to um, do it again when we have it in the car. Let's see if the bottom one fits better. Junk. All right, guys, same way we took it out. We're gonna pop this one back in there now. These hoses again are gonna be in our way, so we gotta work around that. back on and hopefully we'll hold it you want these because with the fan blowing and everything that keeps the air in there so make sure to align those little aluminum studs that were sticking out or plastic studs that were sticking out of the bottom radiator into the holes that were down on the bottom so your radi radiator is securely sitting um, okay now we'll hold it like that now I'm snap that hose that was here back onto the radiator so it's secure and now we're just gonna bolt it back up what am i on the bottom make sure the radiator sits in these holders here one on each side so it lines up nicely there's a little bottom view so now we bolt it up the same way we did before another thing is make sure you guys have these tabs on you have to slide them under before you put the radiator as those hold the radiator in as well in place. So get those in, then slide on the radiator. So here's our challenging bolt. 
Right in there, we gotta get in. So same way we put in the back, just put your hand right through there. And then easy access, actually invisibility to the bottom one. I removed my grill in the front. And you can see, so another one is going in there. And then the one by the drain. So I'll get these on, move into the hoses, and so on. I'm not sure now, once you mount your radiator bolts, mount those two bracket bolts, it's all 10 millimeter socket. Once that's all done, we can reconnect the hoses now and then the fan. Guys, now we get our hoses in and our fans. So before I put the fan in, I'm gonna put my lower radiator hose in that connects to the thermostat. Then I'm gonna do the radiator and then I'm gonna do the upper. And I have a big problem with the upper hose. This is it, I'm using the clamps as they were in good, good, good condition. Problem is, the radiator, radi this radiator is supposed to be 1.5 inch outlets both bottom and top this top one is one and three quarters i don't know if it's a manufacturing error or whatever but the description in the listing said it's one and a half inch i should have checked it before i installed it i didn't um i complained to the seller obviously so be careful if you do buy this radiator to check that before you start installing check with the seller and so on it's supposed to be 1.5 and 1.5 inch as that's what your car is and that's what the hose is made for Luckily, I went to AutoZone. I found this universal hose. It has a wire inside, so it's flexible. One and a half, one and three quarters, same length. It's gonna fit here perfectly. So this is my solution. Uh, since I don't wanna replace this radiator right now, unless I truly need to. If there's other issues, I'll comment below. So check my comments below. Uh, but this is port number 52420. I got this from AutoZone. Uh, so if you get stuck in a similar situation with any radiator, you know, that's your solution. Uh, it said the radiator is for this car, but that must be an error in manufacturing. Anyway, let's get this hose in. So I'm putting it right through here. I gotta navigate through all these hoses. And I'm gonna connect it to the radiator first. Make sure you have your clamps on, make sure they're already pushed back so they're not in the way when you try to slide this on. Okay, this is gonna be hard to show you guys how to get in there. You can lift your car a little bit, try to get from under, but I'm gonna try to go from here. If I took it off this way, I should be able to get it on that way. So here it is installed. And yes, from the bottom was a lot easier show you guys so make sure your clamp if you're using these clamps it's pointing downwards so you can easily lock it from the bottom here i don't even have to lift the car up so that's done now we can connect it to the thermostat now the thermostat same idea we're just gonna slip it on all the way and clamp it Got it all the way past the groove. So it's clamped on. Now we can get a fan in. And then we can work on the upper hose. So the fan guys, it has to land on those tabs. There's one on this side and one on the other side here. So we gotta maneuver that in there. And these are what needs to clip on there. So let's hope this will line up with this radiator. Watch all your hoses. All right, once you have it on those tabs, we're gonna get our bolts in now. So remember one on this side, one on this side. On the 
other side of which is right below the radiator hose connection. Okay. So now, the moment of truth. We're gonna do our custom hose connection since we couldn't go with the original one. So I got lucky to have one of these in the store. So, let me get you guys some more light in here. Cameraman, here you go. So, I'm gonna connect the radiator first. Give me some light here. Okay, all right, that fits perfect. And now, here and now we just tighten our clamps and we just did a custom radiator hose setup for our charger oh don't forget guys reconnect your fan reconnect your fan electricity so that just slides right in there click you in now we're just going to tighten these up Yeah, I'm using the aftermarket clamps as the original ones where I'm gonna fit over this hose right here. Get some light right here, please. Okay. All right, that's it. That should be it, guys. All right, guys. Got some daytime here. Let me show you the finished setup. I replaced uh, this uh, with the original bracket as it was just heavier duty. The other one uh, started cracking me when I over tightened, so I'm sticking with the original as it's in good condition. The one down there was better quality, so it held up fine. I used this angle uh, socket uh, to get in there on an angle to tighten that properly. Uh, the fan is all mounted, it's clipped in. I got my four bolts I showed you guys before, two up top here, two on the bottom. I got these mounting brackets secure. I got my uh, fan uh, radiator plastic covers on top and bottom secure. The bottom was a little loose. So what I did is I zip tied the ends here, as you guys can see, and that's holding it just fine and in place. So that worked fine. The lower radiator hose is all set down here. Um, secure thermostat is all secure as well. Now we can top off the cooling system um with fresh fluids and we'll be done so you're using 50 50 mix so if you get a concentrate make sure to mix it have concentrate have distilled water distilled so there's no minerals which will damage you know your internal engine parts over time um basically you're measuring either 64 ounces or 1.9 liters to make a half gallon make a mark fill this up halfway with coolant then the other half with water and so on you need about 11 liters or quarts to top of the cooling system for this car. So that's what we're gonna estimate it at. All right guys, that's it for the rad radiator replacement. Uh, as I said, I just have to top of the car with my antifreeze. You gotta bleed the system, meaning burp it. I'm doing a separate video on that as that takes a few minutes. So please check the link below and you can see how to do that. That's a must. Anytime you're topping up your coolant, replacing your thermostat, radiator, whatever, or replacing your uh, coolant in your radiator, you know, every couple of years like you're supposed to. So you have to make sure you burp the system. So I have a full video on that, link below. Also link below how to pressure test your cooling system if you are seeing issues or heating issues. And link below how to replace your thermostat. And if you subscribe to my channel, there's a bunch of other videos on this car and how to do, you know, other how-to videos. So please give me a thumbs up. Any comments if you have any questions or feedback. Uh, thank you for watching and come back for more.